Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today is a mailbag time day, and I received a, quite a lot of things, and as well as some pretty interesting stuff. So let's get started. Um, let's start out with the ESC. So I've gotten two new ESCs here. I got the DYS Aria Slims. Now, if you take a look here, I thought they would come with a low ESR capacitor, kind of like the uh, Racer Star versions, but these don't. All they do provide you is two heat shrinks, as you can tell right here. Filtration looks somewhat minimal, and we can see a shunt resistor right there. Just three caps for filtration, um, a nice little heat sink, and um, that's about it, really, an LED. So I wish they would have probably removed the LED and put a capacitor there just to increase the filtration somewhat because they are stating that it's rated up to a 6S. So I don't know if it really is. So let's put these to the side. These will be out tested on the channel very soon. Also, the other ESCs that we got were the new T-Motor FPV 45 amp 3 to 6S 32-bit ESC. Now the filtration on board looks beautiful, but the MOSFETs seem to be small. So, uh, we'll see. Um... I mean, you might, we might have really good filtration, which is really nice, but I'm worried that the MOSFETs are not going to be able to handle 6S crashes and 6S, you know, screw ups, basically. This is just theoretical and it does not translate into real world, but this is just my opinion. But, um, filtration looks good. I can tell you that right now. So as you can tell here, I got some antennas and I got RP SMA and SMA as well. Now I've, I've gotten my, my only patch antennas actually from this company. It's called the Miko, I think. And, um, I saw these on Banggood for the longest time and I've been just eyeballing them and I decided to pick them up because I'm doing the long-range testing now these are really nice antennas here they're for 5.8 gigahertz uh, they're stating that it's 15 dBi so we're gonna get some pretty good uh, range if we have this pointed correctly transverse 90 degree angle and vertical 45 degree angle now we'll check what that means and how to test that in the field once I have prepared everything up so yeah I got two of them they come in RPSMA and SMA I do have high hopes they do look like a really good quality uh, we'll do a little in-depth video later on where we take them apart once we actually test the range here so I got four you know RPSMA and SMA and the reason why I got two is one for my fat shark and one for my EV 200s and I'll explain the EV 200 in a little bit let's take a look at these these are pretty interesting now, I don't know what the heck's inside this 3d printed part but this one got really good range uh, and somewhat of a decent penetration I mean low low flying around uh half a kilometer which i was really nice i really wanted to test these the other day but that's when i lost my zod nano talon but i did send a rescue mission you'll see that in a later video and uh we'll see how well how we're gonna rescue that one i did find its exact location because i did also get the xiaomi me uh 4k drone which i'm using for recovery missions now <laughs> So yeah, I was able to find it, but these seem, to, I don't know about this one, I haven't tested this one, and I'll leave a link to everything down below, I'm trying to get a bunch of antennas in for testing here. Alright, and uh, this one here, this one's kind of like the one I have, but it's from a different company called RJX Hobby, I'll have it linked down below, it's a 9 gain antenna, these are really good patch antennas, uh, this one I don't know, what's really nice though, these also do provide an adapter from RPSMA to SMA, which uh, I think is very useful, I didn't expect that, so... Uh, I'm going to be using this little adapter that came with it and I'm really happy for it and they do have as you can tell this yellow here it gives it a really nice look but I think mine is broken or I don't know if it comes like that but just that 3D printed part which just can be removed it's it has no use really just other than to protect dust and, and stuff from getting in I guess but um, I the other one that I have doesn't have any of this stuff but yeah that's really nice they did that <clears throat> also I picked up this one it's a Pugata 3DBI or Pugata 3B uh, real ACC right hand polarized uh, antenna here so it is using the PCB as you can tell we have three PCBs in there we have one up here one here and one here and uh, yeah I was right and I don't want to misalign that let's keep it to how it was so yeah there we go so I'm really curious to see how this is gonna test I don't know what to put it on whether a model or for receiving so we'll see how that works out also this one this one is a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5.8 gigahertz antenna so 5.8 gigahertz is 11 dbi 2.4 gigahertz it's 8 dbi um i don't know how good this is i think this was a no name uh, i just wanted to see how good it is actually i never got to it because it is sm rp sma and uh, uh i just uh yeah everything i had was sma so yeah we're gonna see this upcoming with the antenna testing here so that's gonna be pretty interesting and again all the links are down below I also got this antenna for the FR Sky, which I'll be doing the long range testing on, possibly one of the first videos, uh, just because that, that, you know, that thing's already set up. So, yeah, I would really want to see the difference between the normal antenna, the TBS Crossfire antenna, this antenna, and then later on I'll get that diamond one, and we'll see how those perform. Also, I bought a bunch of spares of the PCB antenna for the R5, uh, 
sorry r9 receiver here the big r r9 receiver it comes with the mmc export i already ripped the two that i came with it and uh, that's why i purchased four more here i'm going to be extra careful with these and uh yeah you definitely should pick up some if uh, it's just a new build because you're more than likely going to rip these antennas they're pretty strong but you'll still in hard crash you'll rip anything so i got some of those this one also when i was doing the 2.4 gigahertz testing it came a little bit late but i'm still planning on doing it it's, it's a patch antenna for 2.4 gigahertz and i forgot how this thing actually opens so let's take a look at this here so it does come with the adapter i haven't opened it so we can see it together here so it's a lancian rc it's a 2.4 gigahertz antenna can possibly be used for 5.8 gigahertz but we'll see that as time goes on here let's just take a look it's just a pcb antenna and uh, i'll have it linked down below maybe the first one uh so you can kind of get an idea what this is going for here so it is a patch antenna which is kind of strange and uh it's going to be pretty interesting can't wait to see how well this performs maybe we can even actually stick this on uh, you know an external antenna for a qx uh, for not a Q, for like an x light or, or a qx7 I think, I think we could remove the QX7 antenna, I don't remember. Alright, I also got this little micro, which I find to be actually pretty unique in the way that it actually takes batteries. So this is from the LDARC, which I believe is also King Kong. Plastic seems to be really good, almost as good as the other one that I've reviewed there. Um, so this is going to have a really nice bashing session because I do have a friend that's just learning how to fly and he's just destroying all the little micros that I give him. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Now, if you take a look here at the battery input, which I thought was really strange, it's taking, you know, the, the 2S balancer port type uh, power here for some reason. I don't know why they did that. And uh, yeah, you can basically fly your 2S. It doesn't matter what output you had on here. Now you can fly your 2S directly through this. So that's kind of nice, but don't put it. You can't even put a 3S in there. And uh, they also do provide you with the adapter. But I think we'll keep this for a later video, actually. I think it'll be better. Uh, but overall, it's looking... It looks good. I mean, that's all I can say, just how it looks. It seems pretty solid. The USB is in the front. I really like that. They provide you with a lot of things, so that's something really cool in this. I can't wait to actually test this one out. I'm probably going to fly it indoors here. Um, let's see what else I got. I got some... Here, we got, we got some Matex. Some Matex flight controls. I got more of them. The, the wings, the F405 and 411 wings. I got two F405s and two F411 wings. And uh, also the Mobius Maxi. I got two of them. Uh, the one with different uh, field of views, and also this one. This is pretty interesting, actually. This is a DVR. Nothing so interesting about this one. However, there's one thing really nice about this. Can you see that right there? It's battery power. So when you boot this up, boom, which is really nice. And it's charged via USB, and I think it can even charge through the pads that they give you. Now, to connect it to something, how do you go about doing it? They provide you with two of these 3.5 millimeter jacks, and um, they, they have it in the manual. Of how to connect or what goes to what here so they, they just this is how they provide them they're not ripped or anything so you would put one on the av in and then one on the av out i really want to test this it's really small compared to other vtx's if we take a look at this one i also got this eachine one to compare and to do testing basically is for antennas so we got this eachine one here this one here so they're they're kind of good. They're they're okay. So I'm curious to see how what's the difference between these two. I know this one has a battery. It's pretty. It's a metal casing, believe it or not. So this might be able to take a nice little impact. This one's all plastic. This plastic can usually take pretty good impacts as well. This one seems easier to connect. But we're gonna test these two DVRs anyways in an upcoming video. So we'll see that later on. All right. So two things. <clears throat> I got an Eachine screen and the EV200s. Now, the EV200s, um, you know, since I, I've gotten it so late now, I've watched everybody's reviews, seeing if they did change anything of the older issues that people were having. And I can tell you, to my surprise, to my surprise, this thing fits 10 times better on my face than a Fat Shark does. But not yet. Just wait a second before you go anywhere. I'm using the Fat Shark HD3s. So, so coming on the way... Skyzone is releasing a newer goggle, a really fixed up version of their goggle. And I have a Fat Shark HDO on the way. So for this price, we're gonna compare it against those goggles and see if it outdoes them. But I can tell you here from testing it in the shop yesterday when I received it, I was in awe. I didn't expect that everyone made it seem like it's an absolute piece of shit. But I can tell you it's 
the the it was really nice actually really nice we're gonna go into a later video this we're actually gonna take this apart and see how it works too since it takes uh two what is it called two receivers so i mean uh but you know from using it yesterday if i was like you know i went to a race or something or there was like a little gathering of drone flying people and i asked someone to use it and i used it and then i came back the next day and i would have told you it's fucking awesome actually um also got the screen it has a battery built in diversity and also a sd card for recording which is really nice av out av in this is a full-fledged beautiful little ground station so i really really like this one uh this is going to be very useful for me especially for setting up and it does come with the charger and you can also power it up to i think up to a 3s here they even give you the jst to 3s Let's actually take a look at some of the things that it comes with here uh, they give us cleaning cloth, instruction manual, they give us even a nice carrying pouch. This is a premium, premium setup. I mean, you're getting a lot of things. You, the the charger is not here, it's because it was charging right now, because I want to use it. Uh, they also give us, you know, this is the JST to power. The charger, again, I mentioned, it's over there. For AV input, so that's really nice. And they give us two dipolar 5.8 gigahertz antennas, which I will not be using, but they're really nice to have around. For spares and if for just quick testing so that is uh this thing uh, is really nice the quality is really nice. we'll see that in a later video because you guys are going to see this one quite often actually i'm probably going to get a little bit more I'm running antenna testing on screens here and i'll explain why later on with rssi outputs i'll probably hack into it grab the rssi have some other component on the external recording so we can kind of get a better test or better data for the test so let's take a look at this here now, a couple things that I like out of the box of the EV200s here, uh, that it comes with a carrying pouch, comes with everything, comes with even two different types of straps. I don't know if this came with it back then, this cover, because it gave me they gave me two covers here, so I need to double check that. Uh, so they do provide this, and you also can route it through the top. Uh, it has a DVR, it has the two receivers already built in, and it fits on the face, absolutely spectacular. It is 16 by 9 so that's something to take note of here dpd adjustments uh on the fat shark i can always just barely get it with this one i can get it and even more but i i will have a little bit of blurring somewhere so you know coming in from a fat shark hd3 um it's not bad it's, it's not bad at all actually uh the, the blurring is is really minimal like absolutely minimal like it's unnoticeable but it's just something i wanted to mention and we'll get into this in detail hdmi input fan usb audio output av input so the ev200 is seems to be pretty nice as my first impressions but i'm gonna put into uh, put it into its paces and uh, come back with a review in a couple days or so and then i'll let you know how this went and well i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.